What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be making flatworms. Flatworms are super popular. Had the idea to do this video because everybody on the Elite Series and MLF and everything, they're going up north right now to catch those small mouths. So let's do a flatworm video. We're gonna be using the Do It Molds Wave Worm Mold. This mold is an absolute awesome mold that you need to have in your tackle making lineup. Um, these 3.8 inch drop shot baits are gonna flat out get bit. In today's video, we're gonna be making a laminate color. If you don't know what a laminate color is, that means it's a two color bait. So the top one color, bottom one color, and you need some special equipment to do that. And I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about how to make laminate color baits in today's video. So there are a couple things that you're gonna need in order to make these laminate color drop shot baits. The first thing you're gonna need is a dual injector. This is the dual mold dual injector. These are both four ounce injectors that are combined together with this little device right here. And you also need this little top piece so that way the plungers go up and down evenly. I also like to have a couple different things to be able to mix up my plastisol. You're gonna want two different ones so that way one color is with one of these knives and another color is with the other knife. It's actually really important to do that. It makes it a lot easier not having to clean everything every single time you put it in the plastisol. You're also gonna need to get a blending block and usually the blending blocks would come with the dual injector. The dual injector comes down and this is what blends everything together. The two different colors come out of the bottom and you get your two color bait. Something else that's really important is having good quality gloves. I like this style glove better than just regular cloth ones. Having this little like, rubberized coating on the bottom helps get that plastisol off if you ever get plastisol on your fingertips or something like that. The next thing you're gonna wanna have is a thermometer. I like these infrared thermometers. They're not the most accurate thermometer that you can buy in order to get the most internal temperature on your plastisol. However, it is the easiest way to do it and it gets it close enough and I haven't had any problems using one of these types of thermometers when I'm getting my plastisol ready to go. Something else you're gonna need is you're gonna need two different types of glass measuring cups. I get these ones from Target. I'll put a link to them down in the description. You just need a Pyrex cup. You need something in order to measure out. You want the glass because it won't melt in the microwave. And then of course, you're also gonna need your mold. We're gonna be using the Duo Molds Waveworm today. And then you're also gonna need some flakes and some colorant, and we'll talk about those as we're mixing up our Plastisol here in a second. And of course, you're gonna need some Plastisol. This is the Duo Molds Crystal Clear Plastisol in the soft formula. You wanna get different varieties of hardness when it comes to the Plastisol, because your softer ones are gonna be great for your finesse baits, and then the harder ones are gonna be good for your craw baits and ones that you need to be more durable. The drop shot baits and stuff like that, you're definitely gonna want some of the softer formulas because you're gonna get the most action possible out of those small subtle baits. So one of the main things you need to consider when you are making your Plastisol or getting it ready to pour is before you put put it into these measuring cups, you wanna make sure that you are actually shaking up your Plastisol because the Plastisol will settle when it's inside of its jugs, when it's just sitting in your garage or wherever you're storing it. So you wanna make sure you shake it up really, really well, and then you're gonna pour it into your measuring cups. And for laminates, I recommend you getting even amounts on both sides because it's gonna help with getting the same temperatures on each of your different colors. And that's why I like to also pour them into separate cups because that way I'm gonna be able to keep these temperatures as close as possible. Something else that's really important with the Plastisol is when you're heating it up, you wanna take it slow and periodically take it out of the microwave in order to stir everything up and get a good uh, temperature throughout the Plastisol because you don't want the bottom heating up or the top heating up before the other. You want everything to heat up around the same temperature at the same time. It's gonna make your Plastisol just work a lot better. If you overheat your Plastisol, it can start to yellow and then you're gonna have issues in getting your colors to exactly what you want them to be because your Plastisol burned up a little bit. I prefer to heat the Plastisol up one minute at a time until I kind of get this type of a texture and this type of a look in my Plastisol and then I'm gonna start to slow it down and begin to heat it up at 30 second intervals so that way I make sure not to burn my Plastisol. Now that my Plastisol is nice and liquidy in this consistency, that's when I'm gonna start taking the temperatures. Right now I like to stir it and get the temperature as I go. This one's at 315 to 320, and this one is 323 to 325. So this one's a little bit hotter, but they still need to get up to about 350 degrees. 
Okay, so off camera, I took the temperatures of these and they're both over 350 degrees. You just need to get it close to that 350 because by the time you add the colorant in, like this X2 colorant from Dual Molds, you're gonna end up heating it up a little bit more and that temperature will rise. This is gonna be our green side and this is gonna be our more like silvery kind of shad color side. And I'm just gonna take a couple drops and that's four drops right there. And then we are going to stir that in. I don't want it to be super, super dark. We are using the Dual Molds Essential Series molds, and sometimes those molds do darken the baits a little bit because they don't have that real crisp, clear look, which is really sometimes not what you want. But that green so far looks good. And then this is a smoke silver color. I like to shake up my Plastisol before, or shake up my colorant before I put it in there. That's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna put two drops of that in there. I want this one to be very, very translucent. We may add some flake onto this side as well, but this one is very, very clear. We still do need to add some salt because I want these baits to have salt in them. It's gonna help them sink. Now, when it comes to the salt, I just use this Morton popcorn salt. You want the popcorn salt because it doesn't have iodine and it's very, very fine. I'm just gonna take this quarter cup measuring cup and I'm gonna fill it up halfway. Maybe a little bit over halfway because we have just a little bit over a cup of Plastisol and that's what I want my ratio to be. I'm gonna pour about half of this into the green side and you wanna stir it as it goes in. I'm trying to do this on camera so sometimes it doesn't always work out the best for me when you're trying to do things with your off hand. But that's about right. And then we're gonna go over to our other side and then pour the rest in there and just stir everything in. You want that, that salt to get stirred in. It will settle at the bottom and every time you pour, you're gonna to need to stir it back into the top of your Plastisol because like I said, it settles at the bottom. So now it's time to add some flake into our green side. I just like to take this quarter teaspoon sized measuring spoon and pour it in. That was probably half of the quarter teaspoon and then I'm just gonna mix in that black flake. Next thing we're gonna do is get about the same amount of that purple Get that in there as well. And that's kind of what we're looking like inside of our cup. Nice color in there, nice green color along with the nice flake and that black flake that kind of helps it out as well. Right now we don't have any flake in this side. I might put some silver flake and some blue flake in there just to kind of give it a little bit of something. And But first we're gonna put it in the microwave to heat up again. Our Plastisol has been heated up. What we're gonna do is add some of this 08 silver just a little bit in there. Then we're gonna get 015 blue. Just a little bit of that as well. Just to give it a little bit of something on that bottom side of our bait, because that clear side is gonna be the bottom. And then I also wanna add just a little bit of red onto our green side, and this is 08 red as well. Doesn't take a lot, I just want a little hint in there. Now we're gonna go in and mix this all up. It's not gonna change our top color too dramatically with that little bit. Just that, just gives it a little bit of a hue. It looks a little bit more red on the knife because there's some of that flake stuck on there. And we're gonna stir it in onto our clear side. And I think this is gonna give it a nice little bait fish kind of profile on that bottom side. And like I said, the flake's a little bit heavy on the spoon itself, so it's not gonna have that much flake actually in the bait. But overall, I think that's looking pretty good. So a couple things I want to point out when you're making these baits is you want to have clamps on your mold to keep everything nice and snug so that way you don't have any flashing. Flashing is when that Plastol gets in between the two sides of the mold and then you have plastic sticking out of your bait. A couple other things is have your molds marked. So right here, it probably doesn't show up on camera, it says bottom. You want to make sure you put what side the bottom is on your mold because when it goes to putting on your blending block, it does matter which side your bottom color and your top color are. Something I wanna point out right now is this consistency is too hot. The hotter your Plastisol gets, the more liquefied it gets. That's too hot for what I'm trying to do. Sometimes when you're pouring these laminates, if your Plastisol's too hot, it'll start to blend together too much. So I gotta let these cool down a little bit before I inject my baits into the mold so that way my colors don't blend more than I want. I think our Plastisol should be cool enough to get going. Just gonna stir everything up one more time before we inject these baits. Remember, you wanna stir these a lot with the salt so that way the salt gets 
all the way throughout your plastisol in the cups. Now what we're gonna do is draw up our plastisol into our injector. Now we're gonna move everything out of the way so you can see. And then now this is critical, getting everything in the right spots critical. I'm gonna go over to our blending block and our mold, even pressure down, go over to the next one, even pressure down, and we're gonna keep that going the entire time. You don't wanna be too firm with your pressure because once again, that will make your colors blend together. When you go too firm, it can create flashing. As you're doing this, you can start to feel your plastisol starting to set up inside your injector sometimes because it just gets a little bit harder to push everything down. We still have plenty of time with these baits right now to get everything poured. You got multi-cavities, which is great because that means we get to make a lot of baits at one time. And we got one more bait to pour and it's definitely a lot more firm by the time we get to the end of this run of baits okay so here goes nothing this is where it all comes together whether you got good baits or you don't whether your laminate worked out or not we're gonna find out right now so far it appears that they did pretty good it's not perfect i think my colors are a little bit too light to get the direct laminate that i'm looking for but that's number one it's definitely on the bottom which is all i really care about we'll go to the next one yeah, these laminates didn't turn out as well as I was hoping for, but you definitely have that color change, which is all I'm really looking for. I just think that that clear side's too clear, and it's just letting that green kind of penetrate down so that that laminate doesn't come through as well. Here's something I want to show you. As my plastis all cooled down, like I was mentioning, my laminate got a lot better. So in this second round of baits that I'm going to do, I'm definitely going to let my plastis all cool down a lot more because this one turned out much, much better. Yeah, and here's another one when it was a lot cooler and my laminate's much better. It was just too hot before and everything kind of bled together more than I would have liked. Well, it's time for round two. Get everything stirred up nicely so that salt is everywhere. Draw up that plastisol. Get as much as we can out of there. We got good flow. Get our cups out of the way. Test for flow, good flow. Even pressure down like we did last time. I'm going to do less pressure to see if that helps with my beginning colors or my beginning worms because they're the hottest in the beginning. And then as it takes time to get my laminates and get my baits made, the plastisol cools down. So I'm hoping with that less, least amount of pressure, I'll get better looking laminates from the beginning all the way through. There are a lot of factors in play when it comes to laminate baits. Temperature consistency of your plastisol if the consistencies are off from one side to the other side like one color is thicker than the other side you're gonna have problems if it's too hot you're gonna have problems sometimes if it's too cold you're gonna have problems so laminates are a little bit more difficult than just doing a regular one color bait but laminates are unique and just give a little bit more realism as well so there is a trade-off there and the other problem with laminates is when you have laminates, if you mess them up, you can't remelt them like you can with single color bait. Here's our second run of baits and the laminate did not work as I was hoping. The laminate is definitely present down on the bottom of that bait, but the laminate transition between the two colors isn't very present. It's there, you can see it in person, but on camera I'm sure it's not coming through. Uh, we'll look at another one right here. but. These are going to work for what I want them to do because they do have that clarity on the bottom that I'm going for along with that green up on top. But what's interesting is my sprues look almost perfect. There's definitely a distinct laminate there and then a laminate on the other side. And here's another sprue as well. And it's definitely a distinct laminate color on those sprues. What that tells me is that my colors are a little bit too thin and it's overpowering my clear side on the bottom. Well guys, that's the realities of bait making. Sometimes it comes out great, sometimes it doesn't. But every single time you do these baits, it's a learning process. If I could do this over again, I'd make that top part a little bit more dominant, that green a little bit more dominant, and I'd have that bottom have a little bit more color in it. And I think these laminates would have turned out much, much better. Sometimes with laminates, you need to have a little bit more colorant than you're used to. That is one of the keys that I've learned over time. If you want to learn more about what it takes to start making your own baits, click on the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.